working overnight. A plane carrying 143 people out of Guantanamo Bay slid off a runway and into a river in Jacksonville, Florida. 21 people have minor injuries. Officials calling it a miracle, saying it could be much worse. Backstreet Boys fan Asha Heisney <laughs> live in our newsroom with the latest. Asha, good morning. Yeah, good morning to you. Yeah, this is just coming in this morning. Boeing says they're providing technical assistance now at the request of the NTSB, which, by the way, has now sent a team to the scene to start investigating. This Boeing 737 charter flight you're looking at right there is operated by Miami Air International. It was en route from Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, and landing at Naval Air Station Jacksonville. That's a military airport at the Jacksonville Naval Complex. Now, officials say the plane slid off the runway and then went right into the St. John's River. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office says the plane landed in shallow water but was not submerged. Now, 21 adults were transported to local hospitals. This according to a tweet by the Sheriff's Office here. Uh, they were transported by Jackson Fire and Rescue. All of them are listed in good condition. No critical injuries. Over 80 fire and rescue members responded to this. Amazing response and work, JFR uh, hashtag teamwork. Unfortunately, we're hearing that there were some pets on board. Uh, they have not yet been retrieved this morning because of safety issues with the aircraft. Overall, though, officials breathing a huge sigh of relief. It is a miracle. We could be talking about a different story this evening, so I think there's a lot to say about, uh, you know, the professionalism of the folks that helped the passengers off the airplane. It very well could be worse. Okay, so here's what we know about the plane. It's called the Rotator. It's a charter flight that ferries military personnel, contractors, and family members on and off the military bases. Jacksonville Mayor Lenny Curry said teams were working overnight to contain fuel spilling into the water there, and he's getting a lot of support. He tweeted this um, earlier in the evening. Uh, the real, at real Donald Trump White House called to help as the situation was developing. And guys, listen to this. You won't believe this. Jacksonville Fire and Rescue said, ironically, their special operations team had just trained for an incident just like this one with their Marine units earlier in the day. Can you believe that? Wow. wow. What an amazing wow. coincidence. Glad they did. Thank you, Aisha. Training Thanks, important. Aisha. You never know. No, I've actually, I served in Guantanamo Bay for a year. I've taken flights like that. Usually they're smaller mm. puddle jumpers if you're going in and out for leave, but when they're moving a lot of people, mm -hmm. uh, they'll do that quite regularly. So, I mean, listen, the runway at Gitmo is great. The runway in Jacksonville mm. is great. Something must have gone wrong, and we're, we're hoping everybody's okay. Can well, I make my plea to get those animals out of cargo immediately? President Trump, if you are listening, get the animals out of cargo. They are, shouldn't be in there to begin with. Yeah. It's not good conditions. We don't need them overheating and suffocating. Please get the animals out of cargo. Uh, Thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. We knew Jed would say that. Absolutely. And uh, that's important as well. But also, let's not forget, Boeing has had some safety problems. A lot of big issues recently. We're going to dig a little deeper later this hour. Oliver McGee, former U.S. Deputy Assistant Secretary <clears throat> of Transportation, be here 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, so we'll dig deeper on that. Yeah. Sure in awesome. the meantime, big news. Big news. The economy is roaring, and the, the cover the New York Post this morning says, America's working. Lowest jobless rate since 1969. Here's the April jobs report. We talked about it yesterday. They talked about it. Brian Stevens Ainsley yesterday on Fox and Friends. The job number much larger than anyone expected. 263,000 jobs added in April alone. The unemployment rate, 3.6%. That's the lowest since both the Jets and the Mets <laughs> won the World Series and the Super Bowl respectively. A long time. Yeah. Long time. Yeah. The standout for me was the wage growth. Mm -hmm. Average hourly earnings up 3.2%. Average hourly wages hit $27.77. Pretty fantastic. And as we've been having this conversation for a long time about the economy, the question is, how will Democrats run against a booming economy mm -hmm. with policies that will do the exact opposite of what this has generated. Yeah, I mean, we were told for so long the slowdown was coming. Instead, it's accelerated. Mm -hmm. And that, that wage number, uh, $27.77 an hour, I know not everyone makes that. Mm -hmm. But you, if you've got Democrats running around saying, we want the government to set what companies should pay people at $15 yeah. an hour, and the contrast is, no, how about we just grow our economy so businesses are competing 
for workers and wages rise organically. Right. That's always way more healthy, and the president has delivered on that. Well, you know the president's delivered when even a CNN poll is saying his handling <laughs> of the economy is pretty darn good. Uh, this poll saying approve his handling of the economy, 56 percent, disapprove 41 percent, no opinion. 3%. Well, someone who has an opinion is Larry Kudlow, of course, uh, a close advisor to the president inside the White House, and he said this is now far beyond anyone's expectations. Watch. President Trump's policies to rebuild the economy have put us into a powerful prosperity boom, and there is no end in sight. Let's not make this any harder than it needs to be. Low tax rates, regulatory rollback, energy openings, trade reforms, growth, 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 growth. That's what you've got going here. Yeah, it's, it's, it's unprecedented what we're seeing right now, especially because inflation, you usually expect inflation and other indices to start rising. You see problems right. on the horizon. Inflation at almost historic lows, very much at a manageable level. And so if you're an opponent of this president right now trying to put together an economic message. We talked about this yeah. earlier. The, all the, the statements put out by Democrats yesterday were like, yeah, it all looks it's good, pretty good but, <laughs> you know, it's like the but people aren't believing the but part of it because they see this and, and people are benefiting. Business is yeah. booming. They're also not living the but part of it. They're living the reality. So if you have more, I always say, if you have more money in your pocket, if you're, if you got a raise, if you have kept your job, if you have gained a job, if you can send your kid to summer camp or or you can buy that extra gift for your kid's birthday. That's what translates to people. You notice there's only 3% in that survey when asked about the economy that had no opinion. That's because it's the lead issue for everyone. If you don't have money in your pocket, you don't have the time. As someone who didn't have money in her pocket for a long time, I can tell you, you don't have the time to think about other issues. You don't start thinking about climate change and all that other stuff that folks on the left often talk about. If you are broke, broke comes first. Or Russia, something like that's that. That's right. It's really true, Because though. you want to feel it in your bones. And obviously, you remember what James Carville said in 19 it's the economy, stupid. That's, That's what right. Bill Clinton uh, wrote into office. President Trump looking to 2020, thinking, okay, the economy is very strong. That could be good for him. The Democratic frontrunner, Joe Biden, of course, served in the Obama-Biden administration when they had a much different approach to the economy. And if you'll remember, just a couple of years ago, then-President Obama, Joe Biden's wingman, was saying, there's no way you can turn it around like this. You're going to need a magic wand. Watch. He's going to bring all these jobs back. Well, how exactly are you going to do that? What are you going to do? He just says, well, I'm going to, I'm going to negotiate a better deal. Well, how, what, how exactly are you going to negotiate that? What magic wand do you have? And usually the answer is he doesn't have an answer. Well, maybe he has an answer now, one. And two, remember the key part of what President Obama was talking about at that time was you can't bring back the manufacturing jobs. They're gone. They're never yeah. coming back. Here we are just a few years later. They're coming back. I with, wonder, yeah. if, I wonder if Joe Biden should put on a sign, uh, Obama's wingman, as you just pointed. I think that could work for him. Uh, well, but then Obama. <laughs> well, that, oh, I thought it. that was Eric Holder. Yeah, he was Obama's wingman, right? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. We're talking about all this attorney general yeah. stuff. You talk about uh, construction jobs, 33,000 added. Mm -hmm. um, government jobs, 27,000. I don't love that yeah. number. But manufacturing yeah. jobs also up in this report. And so he, he said, where's your magic wand? Well, it's. Bada bing, bada boom, here it is. <laughs> when you unleash free market capitalism, innovation, right. investment, and belief, big things happen. Well, Mark Thiessen was on, the, on this channel earlier, talked about why this economy, bad news for Obama-Biden. Well, this is great news for America and very bad news for Joe Biden. And look, the biggest economic problem we have in America right now is that there are more job openings today than there are unemployed people to fill them. So when Joe Biden says, are you feeling it? Yes, people are feeling it. And the people who are feeling it most are the forgotten Americans because manufacturing jobs, half a million manufacturing jobs created in the last year and wages for those people, according to Wall Street Journal, wages for those at the bottom without a high school education rose 6%, which is outpacing everybody else. Joe Biden Biden's rationale for his campaign is I'm going to go win back the forgotten Americans who voted for Trump in states like Ohio and Michigan and Wisconsin. So all the smart people in Washington told you, you know, Donald Trump's not going to have a magic wand. He's not going to be able to turn around the economy. They also told you that he will never win back women in 2020 for their votes. Yeah. Well, we don't know about the votes in 2020 yet, but we know about the money that's pouring in. Mm -hmm. And it's a bit of a surprise, and it's good news for the president. Yeah, the 2020 donations from the first quarter of 2019. Gillibrand, 1,271,135. Kamala Harris, 3,661,680. And third is President Trump. 
Trump at 1,473,830. So, so he's these are number two for donations. female donations. That's yeah. exactly right. These are donations. So everyone that's mm. out there on the left making the talking point that women are anti-Trump or Trump is anti-woman have to remember that the, the, the chief issue that drives women to the polls is the same thing that drives everyone to the polls, and that is jobs and the economy. That is number one. Women are working their small businesses. They are running those businesses. They are feeding their families. They are working two and three jobs sometimes to put food on the table. What they care about chiefly is that economy, and that economy is booming right they're now. Also, That's where that comes they're also a lot of women. Are, they're they're our culture warriors. They see what's happening in our schools, in our churches, yeah. and elsewhere, and they they look at this president's willingness to focus on patriotism. So job, jobs in the economy are big, but they look at what the left represents today, and they see someone in Trump who's willing to defend uh, the the founding principles of our nation: free mm -hmm. speech, the Second Amendment. The, women vote on that stuff too. And, so and, how do uh, Democrats make their case when there's a strong economy for the president? We've got a great soundbite from Elizabeth Warren. We'll play in a little huh. while. In the meantime, <laughs> what do you think? Will the media give the president credit on the economy? Friends at FoxNews.com. Yep. We have something about that too, about how nobody was covering this good economy last night. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. what we got to shift to right now are some headlines for you in the 6 a.m. hour, beginning with a Fox News alert. At least four people are hurt when a factory suddenly explodes overnight. surveillance video capturing the ground-shaking blast at a silicone plant outside Chicago. The explosion knocking out power to 1,000 people, shattering windows across the area. Crews are investigating what caused the blast. North Korea launches short-range projectiles off its eastern coast overnight, according to South Korean officials. The White House says it's monitoring the situation. The projectiles flew at least 40 miles before falling into the East Sea. South Korean military officials confirmed the projectiles were not missiles. The launches come amid stalled talks between the U.S. and the North Korean regime. Mm. How's your headlines? Will there be a third summit or not? We'll find mm. out soon enough. We shall. Yep, we All right, well, President Trump hailing a New York Times report that admits, finally, two and a half years later, that at least two spies infiltrated his 2016 campaign. But could there have been